Okay, hello, this is KC7NYR, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a virtual machine, a program called VirtualBox, on MX Linux, which is a Debian based Linux operating system. Now, if you're running any other flavors of Debian, it's pretty much the same, although you can also install it on Ubuntu and other flavors as well. So on the left hand side uh, panel I have a shortcut but how to get to the synapses. So click here and you'll see this open window of all the goodies on your machine. Just go to system and scroll down and find synaptic package manager. That's how you install, remove, and upgrade packages specifically to MX Linux but also other distributions. Click on that. It's going to want a password and then it's going to open up this window. On the left hand side, if you've never seen this before, um, you'll see all the application applications that are available based on category and um, and then all the to the right you'll see all the packages now you can also search by quick filter is what we're going to do. And I must have spelled it wrong. So let's make sure I have the spelling correct. Synaptic. Make sure it's uh, S-Y-N. Okay. S-Y-N. Synaptic. There it is. Okay. So once you get the spelling correct, it'll pull up a list of items. Now if you notice mine's already installed I'm not going to reinstall it but it's easy you wouldn't see this check mark so in this case you would check this for applications and then hit the apply button right here and apply the changes and that actually installs the package. Now if you want to read about it you can click on it and it tells you what the synaptic uh, package manager actually does. It's a graphical package manager it also has a link to the home page here and tells you what it actually does. So when you check this box, you're going to have to go up and hit the apply button, which is grayed out because I already installed it and I don't want to reinstall it on this particular video for the sake of time. Okay, once that's installed, but I put an actual shortcut. Mine's right here on the left hand side. If I click on this, it'll open the program. But for you until you put that shortcut there you just once again go down click here go to system and then slide over and find the synaptic package manager click on that again open well, excuse me we already did this part let's back up now we're going to go and open the actual um, virtual machine now I put a shortcut here to VirtualBox. Now, let's go find out where it's at. Now, I'm going to guess it's going to be under multimedia, so let's go over there first and see if it's under here, and it's not. So, the other way to do it, if you didn't know where, where anything is, you just type in VirtualBox, and it comes up. But if you want to know which menu it's actually in, let's do it that way as well. So, let's see which menu it, they put VirtualBox under and I can't recall where they actually put it. I thought it was here. But at any rate, VirtualBox will also, it'll show once you open it the first time under your favorites, or excuse me, under your re recently used. You can see here, these are the two programs I'm using right now, or have used. And then you'll see down here, I ran VirtualBox in the past. Uh, let's just go see if it's under settings. Now this is a good way uh, if you were hunting and you didn't know where it's at, um, and I don't know where mine's at, right? So I had to dig around and find out, is it under graphics? Is it under accessories? Maybe it is. So let's check there. And there it is. So it's not where you think it would absolutely be, which I thought would be under multimedia. They put it under accessories, and you'll see it right here. Now, if you want to create a shortcut like I did, and it 
puts this little box on the left-hand side here where my mouse is. That is, you'd right-click on it and just hit Add to Desktop or Add to Panel. Add to Panel adds it to the left-hand side. So you have this option to put it anywhere you want. Okay? So let's go ahead and launch VirtualBox. Now we successfully installed it. What do you do with it? Now, you could look at it like this. So let's just see if it looks better if we open it up. Ah, it does. Now, currently, just a quick walkthrough of all the functions and what's available. Now, you can see I've already installed a virtual machine, Manjaro Linux, Snapshot 1. What that means is backed up the whole operating system. Okay. It gives you all these lines here, general, system, display, storage, audio, network, USB, and shared folders, and description at the bottom. And what this is really uh, tells you what kind of operating system it is that you've installed on your virtual box, where the settings uh, and location is, and base memory, and so forth. Same thing with the display and your storage. How much allocated memory I put, I put 32 gigs. So this gives you a summary of everything. But let's assume now you're going to install something on it. We don't want to do that in this video because we're strictly showing you how to install a virtual machine and what some of the settings are. Okay, so at the top here with the virtual machine, you'll click on File, and this tells you your preference settings, export, reset, exit, and so forth. On preferences, it shows the general location of the default folder where you can find a lot of things, your input, and it explains all this in a scroll menu. Your language, your display, how it utilizes this, your network. In this case I didn't have, this is for a NAT network which we didn't add in extensions. Okay. The other thing is the machine itself. This is the same here as this shortcut menu here except you have an option here to clone, which means you can make an exact copy of an existing virtual machine. You can remove it, you can export it, you can also move it to another place, which we won't do in this video. I don't use the group setting, and then you can start it here. And these are your tools again. Now the tools will show your details and your snapshots. This is where your snapshot is located. So if you wonder where it's stored or how many you have, it'll give the date. You see how I put my cursor over it, it'll tell you all about your snapshot, which is basically a backup. And um, settings, discard, and start. And so basically, it's simple to use. Now, let's say you want to take a snapshot after you close your virtual machine, and that's the best way to do it. You click here. And what that would do is make another snapshot based on the date. Okay? So it's really straightforward how to use it. Um, and then there's some other items here, create shortcuts, you know, so forth. You can sort your machines. It's really intuitively laid out, simple to use. Now, in this case, this shows you your details. Let's go back to details. If we wanted to start this particular virtual machine, you click on the start button itself, and it's going to now open it, restoring the virtual machine from the last uh, session or snapshot that you took. So it's kind of nice to see this is a full screenshot and what it does look like as it's starting up. And there it is. And I always uh, stress when you see this um, top um, item, this is auto capture keyboard options turned on. This will cause the virtual machine to automatically capture the keyboard every time in the virtual machine. You don't want to X this out until the operating system here, in this case Manjaro, is completely uh, loaded. And the reason why is it'll, you'll, you'll lose your capability of moving your mouse inside and outside of the virtual machine. So that's how you install a virtual machine on, on Oracle, which is an Oracle virtual machine, virtual box manager on Linux. In this case now, I'm going to shut it down, show you how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit save the virtual machine state. And it'll do the same thing it did as it executed when it started up. It loaded the virtual machine based on the previous snapshot or the last time that I backed it up. And you want to do this 
every time because if you added programs, made changes to your virtual machine, you want to make sure it's updated. And pretty much that's all there is to uh, installing a virtual machine on Linux. This is KC7NYR.